With a Neptune Kazemi and Venus entering Pisces, this week's astrology feels like a dream. But is it a good dream or is it a nightmare? That is what we are uncovering here on Magic Monday. Hi, uh, my name is Haley Comet and welcome to Just New Magic Monday, particularly your Magic Monday astrological horoscope for the week of March 11th to March 17th, 2024, where we are breaking down this week's astrology and every week's astrology here in my cosmic corner of the internet with a cosmic beverage in hand, letting you know not just the transits of the week, but how you can co-create with the cosmos, how you can synchronize with these themes and influences in order to step into your most aligned magical timeline. That's why it's called Magic Monday. And when it comes to this week's astrology, it is sprinkled with more than its fair share of magic and fairy dust, what with the Neptune Kazemi and Venus entering her exaltation of Pisces. Venus loves being in Pisces. And the thing about Venus is that when Venus is happy, we're all happy. <laughs> in that Venus is the planet of pleasure and love and beauty. So when she is surfing through waters such as Pisces that she enjoys, we can find that we are in the mood to enjoy life. If I were to summarize and synthesize the energy of Pisces into one statement, which how could you possibly do that? It's the final sign of the zodiac, it's all that is. It's that Pisces is the ability to see the divinity in everything. And so with Venus and Pisces, we are more readily able to recognize the divine within the individuals around us. Now, this can get us in trouble. Okay, I most certainly have some cosmic cautions when it comes this week's astrology with Venus and Pisces and the Neptune Kazemi. But with Venus and Pisces, we are seeing the divine in everything and everyone, recognizing that what it is that exists within you is also within me, that we are all sacred mirrors and reflections for one another to be able to see two people's soul to be able to reconnect with your own soul to attune into the something more love by its very nature does transcend reality and definitely with this week with the neptune kazemi and venus entering pisces we're wanting to transcend reality now does this come with a cosmic caution or 12 Absolutely. There definitely can be circumstances where this Venus and Pisces ability to look at people through rose-colored glasses and tune into the beautiful parts of them, the soulful parts of them. Can that get us into some interesting situations? Certainly, we'll talk about what you need to know stepping into this week's astrology and stepping into this transit. But overall, with Venus and Pisces, whether we are looking at our beloved or looking at life itself, we are looking to see and tune into the divinity around us. And with Within us. And with Venus and Pisces, we are seeking to elevate our daily reality into that something more, into those experiences that feel like a dream. This is emphasized by the Neptune Kazemi over the weekend, Sun conjunct Neptune, which is to be quite frank with you, a whirlpool of emotions and inspiration and nostalgia and art and experiences. And when it comes to this whirlpool with the energy of Neptune, you may start to ask yourself what is real and what is not. With the energy of Pisces season overall, we're merging with everybody, we're taking on everybody's energy. And with the energy of Neptune over the weekend, it could be hard to figure out where it is that you stop and other people begin, right? With Venus and Pisces, we're seeing to people's soul. With the energy of Neptune, the very nature of Neptune is to dissolve, to dissolve the bounds around where it is that I stop and you begin. So with the Neptune energy, you could be merging deeply into art, into connection, into that something more. And as beautiful and dazzling and dizzying as Neptune energy can be, it can be incredibly disorienting. So it's important as we get towards this Neptune energy, as we get towards this whirlpool, that you have your life raft, that you are able to get back onto solid ground away from the whirlpool, that you are not getting sucked in too deeply by this Neptune energy. And we will talk deeply about how you can do that, what to be mindful of in navigating this energy, how to unlock all of this magic of Venus in our exaltation and the Neptune Kazemi. But before we get into all of that, take a step into my cause make cafe my loves what are we drinking as we step into this dreamy astrology so let me know below i am currently sipping a vanilla iced coffee
coffee situation. I took my vanilla bean syrup. I made iced coffee with my Nespresso and then I added some coconut milk and it is just divine. And you know what else is divine? Outside of Neptune Kazemi and Venus in her exaltation, what else is divine is that self-care astrology group classes are back. I am so excited. So within the past, within my course, self-care astrology, how I've done group classes is I kind of bucket them. <laughs> I do like six or seven in a row as a series twice a year. And after polling the individuals who are within the container, they were more interested in a monthly basis because seriously guys, the community that is within self-care astrology is so magical. And I always find myself missing them in between these little like cluster of classes that we do. So we are doing monthly classes within the year of 2024. We meet on Zoom. We have individuals within the cohort from Australia. We have individuals within the cohort from Egypt, from the UK, like all over the world. Think of the most magical people all gathering, getting to talk about astrology and how we can use astrology to enrich our lives. Yeah, it's a really special experience and I'm so excited about the monthly classes and the cool thing about doing it this way is that I am polling the individuals within the container to vote on class topics, times of day that align best with people's schedules. It is a workshop series that is entirely geared towards the individuals who feel called to connect with in this way. So the group classes are included within your tuition on any tier that you jump into within self-care astrology. So self-care astrology is my eight-week astrological course that takes you all throughout your chart, how to read charts, and furthermore, how to read charts in order to activate the magic, <laughs> essentially. Really being able to look at your chart and really tune into, okay, this is my blueprint, and how do I wanna activate this blueprint? How do I wanna step into my strengths? How do I want to evolve beyond my weaknesses? That is the aim of self-care astrology. That is where you are supported in learning how to utilize this tool, this incredibly healing tool of astrology. So it's an eight-week course. There's more than 12 hours of videos from me talking you through every facet of your birth chart, and you can either just jump in for the online course and the group classes that's included or there are options for one-on-one -on -one support so in the planetary explorer tier i pop in with voice memos every single week connecting what you are learning about within the online portal to your own birth chart so you can really see your chart come to life as well as sharing about the transits of the week how you will experience them and that opens up the voice memo space so you can also voice memo me like girl i learned this about my chart and this makes sense here or ask me questions i'm telling you doing my voice memos is the highlight of my life. I, I swear to you, I spent about three or four hours kicking back and forth on voice memos. I love it. So the second tier is your ability to gain access to that and learn about your chart in this kind of like conversational voice memo-y kind of way. And then the last tier, you get all of that voice memo magic as well as for one-on-one -on -one consultations in much sooner availability than my public calendar has. So that's a way to get in sooner onto my calendar. I am so excited for these group classes because I'm doing it this way. This year, it's not so much gonna be like these big launches within self-care astrology, just know it's there. It's basically gonna be rolling admission all 2024. So if March is looking a little busy for you, you can always jump in within April or within May, within June, what have you. Just know that these group classes, this Cosmic community, my support is here and available should you feel and heed the call. But I do want to say if you're feeling and heeding that call right now, you can use code Pisces Season to get 30. 3% off any tier and you get access to all group classes within the year 2024. So check it out within the description. I would so love to have you within these group classes and be able to work with you one-on-one -on -one if that's where you are feeling called. But without further ado, let's go ahead and take it into Vibe Check of the Week. So welcome to Vibe Check of the Week which is a segment that we do here on Magic Monday, where we compare all of the astrological influences that we will experience within this week's astrology and every week's astrology to a real life scenario. So that even if you're like, Haley Comet, what's this talk of a whirlpool? <laughs> what do you mean with Venus and Pisces? I'm seeing to people's souls. You can compare what that energy feels like to a real life scenario. So you might not have ever been in a whirlpool. I don't know why you would be. Get out if you are currently there. You might never have experienced that, but maybe you can relate in some way to the scenario that I'll chat you through right now to understand how this energy may come to the surface within your reality. I know it's Pisces season, everything feels like a dream and we're not that connected to reality, but alas, our reality beckons. So this week's astrology feels like the following scenario and feel free to sub in the details in order to make it more applicable and relevant within your world. 
but we'll say for the sake of the vibe check that you had a falling out with a dear friend of yours, Steph. And when I say falling out, I mean falling out, capital F, capital O. Screaming, crying, yelling. Steph majorly betrayed you and you weren't that nice to Steph either. Like you guys had such a major altercation, such a major falling out that there was a viciousness that came out of you that you're like, I didn't even know that was within me. So it is not a good situation between you and Steph. And I mean, you guys have gone no contact for years. And it just so happens that you and Steph are still in the same city and you know that Steph is still friends with people who are your friends. You see her in a rogue Instagram post here and there. You know Steph is around and it's been many years. And it just so happens that a mutual friend of both yours and Steph's is having this huge birthday party. And you know that Steph will likely be there, but it's been many years and the falling out happened when you were like 19, 20. So it did feel like the end of the world. Steph did feel like evil incarnated, but stuff has happened and you've matured and you've grown and you've gone through real life stuff that you're looking back at the Steph betrayal and you're like, you know, the guy that she was talking to behind my back that I also like, like, I don't care about him whatsoever. Like time really does bring perspective and you are neutral about it now. You're not gonna go out of your way to try to like repair a friendship with Steph, but you're like, whatever, if I see her at this birthday party, it doesn't matter. And it just so happens that this birthday party is lit, okay? As Pisces, birthdays tend to be, okay? Happy birthday to all my Pisces who have a birthday this week, okay? It's a lit birthday party and you're feeling yourself, okay? You've got red wine in one hand and you've got a J in the other, okay? You are having yourself a time. And with Neptune energy like this week, there sometimes can be that call to escape or to kind of numb reality, or at least with the energy of Neptune, kind of like soften the harsh edges of reality, which this red wine J combo is kind of, kind of putting you in. So you're feeling yourself, you're vibing, you're socializing. And it just so happens that as you're going to the bathroom, you see stuff there. And again, you're neutral about the scenario. Probably if you didn't have this red wine J combo, you would just ice her out or not say anything or maybe say hi, but just be whatever about it. But in this current state of mind, okay, that you are in, you are just fully in your heart space and you're looking at stuff and rather than seeing this person who you screamed at and yelled at and someone who did you dirty and talked to somebody that you liked behind your back and then lied to you about it, rather than seeing all of that, you think of the times that you laughed with stuff. You think about, you know, being 19 years old with stuff and when you guys would have to go around your apartment looking for change in order to have enough money to go and eat out. Like you think through all of those pure memories that you had with Steph, all of that other stuff just goes away and you can't help it. You go to Steph and you're like, God, I miss you. Like how dumb that we fought over that man. Who is that man? I don't care about that man. I miss you. And it just so happens maybe Steph's also in a similar headspace and you guys just cry and forgive each other and just are loving on each other. And the next day, while it was a heartwarming interaction, you're like, okay, I definitely was allowing a lot of the issues of our friendship to kind of fade into the background. Again, forgiveness can be such a powerful gift to give ourselves. Yes, it's powerful to get it to other people, but when we forgive somebody else, we free ourselves from that weight that that could have been. And that interaction, it did free something from you around being able to forgive Steph and be like, listen, you saw some vicious sides of me. I'm so sorry about that. But when it comes to that scenario and when it comes to this week, we're not always seeing things clearly. So there is some stuff that you kind of brushed under the rug that it's like, ooh, that was actually kind of a red flag within a friendship that maybe I shouldn't be so apt to forget about. Maybe I should remember that data. And maybe I'm literally just seeing stuff through the positive qualities that Steph has. Like I said, with Venus and Pisces, we're seeing the divinity in everybody. So it's like when you see through to Steph's soul, you're seeing and she's opening up to you around, yeah, I just really struggle with feeling validated. So when that guy that you liked was showing me attention, I couldn't help it. And then I lied to you because I didn't want you to know, like you can see to her soul and it helps you to rationalize her behavior and really empathize with her. 
But the challenging thing about navigating this Pisces energy, this Neptune energy, and this week overall, is that there can be this energy to just merge into other people's souls. And just because you can't understand people's behavior because you see to their soul or their, you understand the stage of life that they're in, does not mean that you need to allow them unlimited access to you. I mean, you and Steph at that party, you were telling her everything. You were telling her the tea, the lore that she has missed within the last couple of years. You guys were making brunch plans. Like that's the energy of Neptune is that it dissolves boundaries and you had no boundaries in the moment. You were chatting and making all of these plans. And in the morning as the hangover is coming in, you're like, gosh, is that wise? to reintroduce Steph into my life? Do I want to make that decision? And it's not saying that Steph is an evil person. Again, it could be helpful to see to someone's soul to understand this isn't because Steph is an evil person that she did what it is that she did. She's just a person going through her own spiritual lessons and she did have her reasons for treating me the way that she did. But just because I can understand why she treated me the way that she did does not mean that I need to give her permission to keep treating me that way. So why this scenario feels like this week's astrology. So with Venus and Pisces, we are just so in our heart space. Pisces is about universal selfless compassion and love. So it's like within that state of mind, all you could see her as was just the love that you had for her. And again, Pisces can be a very romanticized rose colored glasses sort of energy. So you are not seeing stuff as she really is or how the friendship as it really was, you were seeing it just purely through that lens of love, which can be so powerful for your week's astrology. I mean, it could be a very creative week. It could be a very healing week. It could be a very spiritual week, but it's also important to note, you are not seeing stuff clearly. And the reason why at the party you had, you know, your J, you had your red wine is because we do have a Neptune Kazemi this week, which Neptune is the planet of substances. It's anything that kind of merges and fogs our reality, which again, isn't helping. We're not seeing things as they are. We're seeing things through this Neptune lens, which can be beautiful. It can be inspiring, but it also can be full of illusion and perhaps even delusion. <laughs> so it's important to stay grounded this week. We do not have any earth within the inner cosmos right now. So it's easy to get swept up in a dream or even in a fantasy around me and stuff. We're gonna reactivate this friendship and we're gonna go back to how things were. You can't go back to how things were. Again, it's not that it's bad to forgive people. I do feel that this week can be quite healing around just letting pain of the past be washed away. And even with the energy of Pisces, if you're able to reach for it, seeing the higher perspective around, gosh, I really did learn so much from that falling out. It was hell to go through, but that experience with Steph really did catalyze my growth in this new direction. Gosh, it was so healing to be able to chat about what we've been up to these past couple of years and be able to just meet on this love vibe. I never think love given is a regret. All I'm saying, without Earth, we can struggle to feel grounded around, okay, what's just fantasy and what is reality? And the reason why, you know, you were so impulsive about chatting with her and telling her everything that was on your mind is because, you know, Mercury is now in Aries, so we can notice that, you know, what we're thinking, we're saying. So it's like, you could not hold back in line with Steph at the bathroom. You had to just blurt out, like, I miss you, all this stuff. Like, we could be a little bit more immediate and express what is on our mind with a little bit more urgency. So there are so many more manifestations that I can't wait to chat with you on, but let's go ahead and move to our day-by-day -day analysis. I want to just make a quick note that all times that I mention are PDT. So the time has shifted, the clocks have changed. So now I am in daylight time, just a note as you compare it to your time zone in wherever it is that you are located. There are timestamps available below where you have the ability to jump to a particular day, jump back to a particular day as you see fit. You can also click the gear icon to speed me up, slow me down, align my rate of speaking with your rate of processing. And without further ado, let's go ahead and take it into Monday, March 11th. On Monday, March 11th, at 2.50 p.m. PDT, Venus, the planet of love, beauty, money, leisure, pleasure, enters her exaltation, the sign Pisces. Hold for applause or angels singing or harps playing because this is a welcome shift within the cosmos. 
And how I explain planets transiting through signs that they exalt into my students within self-care astrology is I compare it to you walking into your hometown bar when you haven't been home for 10 years and all of the old people that you used to hang out with are still there. It's like when you walk in there, you're gonna be treated like royalty. People are buying you drinks, somebody got you food from next door. It's not your domain, but it's a territory that you walk in and you are celebrated versus when there's planets moving through signs that they rule, right? Like for example, we don't have any right now, but let's say, you know, Mercury and Virgo, Sun and Leo. That's more so the energy around you going to the restaurant that you are regular at. You're comfy there, everybody knows your name, they know your order. It's not like, ah, oh, when you walk in, because they expect you and you know the domains, you know the people who work in the back, you know everything there is to know about this establishment. <laughs> That's kind of how I like to think about it. But alas, with Venus in Pisces, we can definitely be lifting love up and lifting those that we love up on a pedestal, which is something important to be conscious of. We talked deeply last week about fantasy, and that's alive within this week's astrology as well. Last week we had Mercury conjoining Neptune, this week we have Sun conjoining Neptune. So when there's a lot of Neptune, we can be deeply in fantasy, deep within a dream world. And with Venus and Pisces, there is a strong temptation to really see people through the lens of fantasy. Like I said, Pisces is the ability to see the divinity in everyone. And it's important with Venus and Pisces, yes, love people for their soul and their potential and their dreams and their ideas, but you also have to love people as they are now. Because the energy of Venus and Pisces, you can fall in love with the fantasy or the idea of someone, even if within reality, they're not showing up as that. Like that's the danger with Venus and Pisces is that when we see to somebody's soul, again, when you're having that conversation with Steph and she's talking about how she's healed and grown, you need to see some real life results. Like with the energy of Neptune and the energy of Venus in Pisces and Sun in Pisces, we are a little bit more susceptible to get duped by, you know, future faking or people painting a pretty picture. It's important to see receipts, see the facts, see the details. And like I said, we don't have any Earth within the inner cosmos. We have obviously Jupiter in Taurus and Uranus in Taurus. When we don't have a lot of Earth, we can struggle to stay grounded. We can get swept into this fantasy around how much stuff has healed and grown and how everything's going to be different now. But you've got to see receipts and you have to be discerning before you just allow stuff to have full access to you. Just because you can see to someone's potential does not mean that they're showing up as that. <laughs> and just because you can see to someone's soul and see the divinity within them does not mean that they have to exist within your universe. So it's love with discernment <laughs> and with boundaries that's gonna be highlighted with Venus and Pisces going on to conjoin Saturn next week. But for now, with Venus and Pisces, you definitely could be more in a romantic mood. And romance is not just something limited to interpersonal connections. This can be listening to more romantic music, getting swept away by beautiful art, going into art museums, like making your life a work of art is the energy of Venus and Pisces. You can romanticize anything in this life, okay? You can romanticize anything. To me, I always think about Lana Del Rey. She wrote the song Video Games because her boyfriend was playing World of Warcraft. Like the way this man was just playing World of Warcraft and she created this beautiful song <laughs> around it, right? And that magic wasn't completely tied to him. It was just elicited via that mundane interaction. It was the lens by which she was watching him play World of Warcraft. And on that note, I just want to say that the magic that is elicited from you when you do connect with somebody, that does not depart your life if that person happens to leave. Oftentimes, we fall not just for the person, but also for the version of ourself that exists within that connection. The parts of ourself that that connection brings out of us, the inspiration that that person elicits. And that exists, even if the relationship fades into obscurity, that exists in perpetuity. It is not contingent upon this person. Because with Venus and Pisces, it's a reminder that love is infinite. Even if that person isn't within our life, that doesn't mean that the love and the beauty that they elicited evaporates. It continues on, even if the relationship doesn't. 
And so that was sort of the energy within the vibe check around you and Steph both acknowledging like there's still love here. Like I still have love for you. That is something that continues to stretch on. You were part of my story. And it's just honoring and celebrating that love that exists as well as the parts of where she helped your growth and catalyzed your growth. It's like sometimes you can find forgiveness when you're able to see, oh, as painful as that was and as dirty as you did me, Steph, I can see why that had to happen for me to step into my journey. I see the spiritual lessons that I got from it. And that's also the nudge with Venus and Pisces. As you can just notice financially as well as aesthetically, you could just want life to feel like a dream. <laughs> with Venus and Pisces too, you could be spending more money on things that are more spiritually oriented, on crystals, things of that nature. With the Venus and Pisces, you can find that aesthetically in terms of beauty, you're, you're drawn to things that elicit an emotion that feel like something out of a movie, right? And you're also just looking out at the world with Venus and Pisces, just wanting to attune to those movie moments. And when I say movie moments, it doesn't have to be this huge cinematic moment. It's just seeing the divinity and the beauty that exists within life. As much as I want to square up with my natal Venus and Pisces in the seventh house, even though it's exalted, I swear, that placement in my chart acts like a malefic sometimes. <laughs> It has caused so many problems for me. So alas, as much as I wanna square up with that placement, I will say one of my favorite parts of myself or something that I really love about myself is that I see the beauty in a lot of little moments of life that almost like move me to tears. Like just small interactions almost make me want to cry because I'm just so in love with humanity and with people's kindness. At the risk of sounding dramatic, I go for these long walks. It's like my favorite time of the week is when I get to go for my long walks. I have this nature loop that I like to do. It's about six or seven miles. Yesterday when I was walking, I just started sobbing <laughs> and I wasn't sad. I mean, that can totally be experienced as we are in Pisces season, right? We're feeling everything intensely, but I was just so overcome with emotion, just how beautiful everything was. It had rained here in San Diego, so everything was just so green and so vibrant and the flowers were blooming and there's this child on this trail who was way ahead of me and he stopped because he really wanted to show me his light up shoes. <laughs> Like he lit them up for me and I was like, oh my gosh, it was so sweet. And the music I was listening was so beautiful and I was seeing birds and I just felt so overwhelmed with all of the beauty that existed around me that I just started crying. You know, an alternate world, if I could have saw the kid as annoying, right? For showing me the light up shoes and I could have been annoyed that everything was blooming because it was messing with my allergies. Like definitely beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And what I wanna say is with Venus and Pisces, we're more apt to be able to see all of the beauty and all of the divinity that exists around us, even in things that are as mundane as going for a walk. I mean, I go for this walk twice a week, right? I don't always cry and sob. I mean, pe literally people were walking by me like, what, is she okay? Just don't mind the girl sobbing down the trail. She's just a Pisces and she's feeling a lot. <laughs> there was a moment yesterday where I saw palm trees and they're catching the light so they looked sparkly and I was almost moved to tears. My neighbor sometimes will play piano and it echoes through the alley and it makes me wanna cry because it's so beautiful and I get sad because I don't know which neighbor plays it. Again, it's a long alley, so it could be any number of neighbor. I've lived here for so long and I've never been able to meet that person and I just want to tell them how much beauty they add to my day to day, that I literally will stop anything I'm doing to go to my window and listen to them. It's beyond just the acts, it's the emotions that they elicit and the connection that it elicits. If you're paying attention, if you take the time to hear the piano in the alley, if you take the time to tell the kid with the light up shoes on the trail how beautiful his shoes are, if you take the time to to look at the palm trees and look how they're sparkling in the breeze. So see the divinity within everything. See the divinity within yourself. This is the ask of Venus in Pisces. On Monday, the only other aspect that's occurring is that we have the Aries moon. So again, it's waxing crescent moon energy. As I talked about last week, we have this golden opportunity this week moving into the 19th where Mercury is peregrine and not yet in its pre-retrograde shadow. Okay, that starts next week. So important contracts you need to sign, taxes you need to get done, things you need Need to handle before the potential chaos that's awaiting us at the end of the month with the clip season. Okay, we're getting nearer and nearer, my love. So just saying that's on the horizon. 
we do have a golden opportunity and with the waxing energy it's helpful for new initiatives new launches new creations you know a lot of new energy is coming in but also by the same token there's also a lot of old energy that's why in the vibe check it's like you know a cycle is being closed we don't know what's ahead with stuff maybe this is the beginning of a beautiful new friendship not the same as what you guys had but a new one or maybe it's a closing of a cycle around you know now that i've found peace within this now that we've had this you know not so sober talk <laughs> at this party. I can close that chapter and no longer have that hate in my heart or that hurt of what that experience is. It's the end of the zodiacal year, but we also have this forward momentum. So there's cycles closing, there's cycles beginning. There could be a little bit of an ouch on Monday. You could be feeling more sensitive. It's Pisces season, okay? Those moments around sobbing on the trail because everything's so beautiful and that child was so sweet that he just wanted to show you his glow of shoes. That would not exist without also those moments of sobbing out of despair around humanity and what humanity's going through and what you're going through within your world. Yes, with Venus and Pisces, we're tuned into the beauty of humanity overall, but we could also be tuned into the ugliness, right? Like Pisces season, there's many highs and many lows. There's the crest of the wave, but there's also the bottom of it. And it's just important to flow with the ups and downs of it all. And with Moon Chiron, there can be energies coming up around where it is that you are healing. This was woven into the vibe check around, you know, the moment that you saw stuff, like with Moon Chiron, it's like, ooh, ouch, ouch, that hurt, right? Even just seeing, her face hurt it brought you back not just to that altercation but also the wounded parts of you that existed within that relationship it can bring you right back and again you had no filter okay blame mercury and aries but also you know the neptune kazemi of it all that you were not totally in the right state of mind that you were just purely in that bleeding heart energy and you could be feeling that on monday you could be feeling very sensitive you could be really tapped into where humanity is suffering where you have suffered within your journey there could be an energy around can i do this like i said sometimes pisces energy it can make us feel like am i strong enough to survive within this harsh cruel world. It can make you feel like you are not potentially with Moon Chiron. It can bring you to a very wounded place, but it's important to say, okay, roomy quote, coming in hot. The wound is where the light enters. Like that's a very Chironian thought because with Moon Chiron, it's an ouch to see her, right? Be reminded of that and have that wound that exists within you. But it could also be healing to revisit that or to be able to connect and be able to meet as you guys are now, not in that wounded place that you guys were in, but like as you are now to be able to heal within that space. So if there are insecurities or things that are triggered or parts of you that make you feel, you know, insecure or uncertain of yourself, allow the light to pour in, allow it to bring to the surface what is asking to be healed and asking to be felt and allow the renewing energy of Venus and Pisces to, you know, wash the pain away as it comes up. So that aspect happens in the evening times. So you might notice you're a little bit more triggered. Like I said, Mercury is also in Aries. So we're more likely to say what's on our mind without a filter and with moon Chiron sometimes with Chiron Aries we could be a little bit more defensive or sometimes even in the space around wanting to hurt somebody else before they can hurt us and that interaction at the party definitely could have gone to a space around you know being mean to Steph don't do that but or icing Steph out before Steph could ice you out but again that behavior comes up from a very wounded part of ourself. Oftentimes that energy around wanting to be aloof or wanting around wanting to be aloof or hurt people, it comes from what's hurting within us. So you could just observe that within interpersonal connections. You could just be more sensitive, a little bit more triggered. And again, with the Aries energy, it's important to take a deep breath before reacting, okay, respond rather than react. And that is the only moon aspect all day. I would definitely say, yes, we're more sensitive and with Venus and Pisces, we're taking moments to, you know, listen to the piano in the alley and tell the kid that you love the globe shoes. Like we're taking moments to, you know, witness the divinity. But I will say it would be an impactful day to handle a lot of what you have to do this week because the following day, Tuesday, we do have a nearly all day void moon, particularly in PADT, like during working hours. So I just wouldn't bank on Tuesday being the most productive day that ever happened. So if possible, if you're not too, you know, triggered or emotional or in awe of the beauty that's existing within you and around you, I would definitely say might be helpful for the tasks. <laughs> On Tuesday, March 12th, as I said, the moon is pretty much void 
for the entirety of the day. The closing aspect is that the Aries moon sextiles Mars in Aquarius, which luckily is a helpful closing aspect. You could find that in the morning time, you're more inspired around wanting to work out definitely recommend that. Okay. Be definitely on your movement in whichever way, your walks, your Pilates, your CrossFit, whatever it is that you like to do to connect to your body. We do not have that much earth within the cosmos. So it's very helpful to feel grounded. And you know, sometimes with Aries moon, it's separating from Chiron. We can be more in a hot head or triggered energy. So it's helpful to have ways to release, which Tuesday would be super aligned for, but you can find, even though the moon's in void and important tasks, we must avoid <laughs> when the moon's void from 4.08 AM to 5.28 PM, that closing aspect, you could find that you're in the mood and you're ramped up to handle the mundane things that you've been putting off the non-urgent, but deeply pivotal tasks that have been stacking up around. I'll get to it eventually. I'll get to it eventually. No, I'll get to it today, Tuesday, March 12th. <laughs> but other than that, it's Mars day. We have a Mars rolled moon pretty much all day, closing aspect, sextiling itself. So it would be nice to put some energy towards what it is that you've been avoiding, mundane arenas of life, you know, challenging your body in new ways, what have you. And then the moon enters Taurus at 5.28 PM. Mm, this is so good, especially since right after the moon enters its exaltation Taurus, it has this sweet little interaction with its ruler. It sextiles its ruler, Venus and Pisces. Like I said, Venus and Pisces, royalty. Walking into the hometown bar, everybody's buying it shots. <laughs> Same with moon and Taurus, royalty. Walks into the bar, everybody's buying it food. So it's just a vibe where we have two royal planets having a little royal conversation with them sextiling each other. So what does this mean for your Tuesday? There is another moon aspect we'll talk about, but when we consider Taurus moon is very grounded and very sensual and very inclined towards things that are pleasing for the senses. With the sextile to Venus and Pisces, there can be a very romantic energy that we're tapping into. This sort of reminds me of those meals where you take that extra step to make it a little bit more beautiful or a little bit more of an event, like getting the special wine that goes with the meal or putting out the candles or going above and beyond to make a nice dessert. Like those moments where we can view, oh, it's just a meal, it's just another day, or we can view it as something divine and something magical and take those moments to make it a little bit more pleasing for the senses, a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more of a moment and really deeply being present. So take that moment, play music while you're eating dinner, grab flowers on your way back from home. Like we can live our life as though nothing is magic and nothing is special, or we can live life as though everything is magic and everything is special. So finding those moments to make it a little bit more pleasing to the senses. I will say that the Taurus moon goes on to square Pluto. It actually happens right at the same time. And so it feels to me this energy around making it a moment and being very present. It's going to be helpful to just keep you grounded did keep you anchored because with moon square Pluto, sometimes there can be an energy around feeling a little bit more jealous or possessive or there can be an energy around feeling anxious and it's just important to tether yourself to your senses. That's why I keep saying connect to your physical body, especially if you're noticing you're more anxious and can't place why. Connect to your physical senses, ground down. Again, allow people to be who they are. Sometimes with Taurus energy, Taurus can be very possessive, right? As a second sign of the Zodiac, they are learning about this experience through stuff and what belongs to me. With the answering to Venus and Pisces, the reminder that People, even if they're a partner, they do not belong to us. We are all souls. We're having this experience and it just feels like with Taurus moon scoring Pluto, whether you're someone that you love is changing or your world is changing, there could be a temptation to want to keep things small or to stay as they are. Or this is my arena of life. It should not change. But again, it's answering to Venus and Pisces. So it's a reminder that there's bigger spiritual cycles that are playing out. This is not just your partner. They're also a soul and they have, you know, their, their karmic contact contracts and their experiences and growth doesn't have to be the enemy. I'm just tapping this energy where you could be observing a crush or a partner or an ex. You could just be observing somebody growing and there could be a temptation around, no, you need to stay like this. With the answering to Venus and Pisces, there's bigger cycles. Everybody's on their own journey and growth is not the enemy. People do not need to freeze in the version of themselves of who they were that when they met you. And maybe you're on the receiving end of this. Maybe somebody is asking you to stay as you are or be this way. We have to acknowledge with Venus and Pisces that we do not own one another. Even if we're 
connected, even if we're best friends, even if we're married, we do not own one another. We are all souls on our own spiritual journey. So just observing if that dynamic comes in and choosing instead with the Taurus moon sextile Venus and Pisces, choosing love, choosing presence. On Wednesday, March 13th, I'm happy to report that this should be a nice productive day. We have the Taurus moon sextiling Saturn and Pisces and then trining Jupiter. So with the energy of Taurus moon, we're definitely taking a slow, steady, intentional approach to the day. We're having those moments moments to pause, to enjoy lunch, to listen to the music that's playing in the alley, to tell the child that we like his shoes. Like we're definitely proceeding at this slow and steady and sustainable rate which is important because with the Taurus moon sextile Saturn, it's a reminder that slow and steady rins the race. Need I remind you of the tortoise and the hare? <laughs> Need I remind you? Because you can race to success towards what it is that you want to create, but true sustainable success that has the ability to be long-term, it's better for things to be more slow and steady. So do not look around at other people's paces and look, they're having these accolades and they got there so much faster. You are on your own journey. Slow and steady does it for you. Because you know, Mercury and Aries could have you feeling impatient where you're like, I want what I dreamed of during the Pisces new moon and I want it now, right? You wouldn't go straight into a marathon before doing a 5k, <laughs> right? Energy and enthusiasm can get you pretty far. Let's say you enroll in the marathon. You know, the first three miles, you could be running on adrenaline. You could be doing good. You could be like, I can make the entire way this way, but you have not properly built up the endurance to keep going. And so much of success is the ability to keep going. I know we see overnight successes, but what's the saying? It takes 12 years to make an overnight success. It does. It takes time to build up that endurance so that you can keep going because we're not just seeking to get to the finish line. Let's say you do get to the finish line. Your body is not prepared for that. You will probably do significant harm to your body if you try to run a marathon without any prep whatsoever. Maybe you can do it, but there will probably be a significant recovery time. Your body will have bared the brunt of it because you have not earned, because you have not built up to that. So even if you get to that goal or somehow something blows up, you have not built it into your schedule or into your body, whatever you want to call it, to the ability to keep going, to sign up for the next marathon or what have you. And you know, when people are noticing or you're succeeding or people are clapping at the marathon, there does bring pressure to that. So I think it's a lot of pressure likely for like overnight successes around how do I sustain this? How do I keep this going? How do I feel this pressure of eyeballs on me and wanting to deliver what people want without allowing that to hinder the process of creating. That's an obstacle within itself. So again, if you are frustrated right now because it feels like something is progressing slower than you would like, understand that you are being trained, okay? You're being trained for sustainable success. And so Wednesday's astrology asks you, attune to your foundations. Okay, with Taurus moon, sextile Saturn, what's going to help you sustainably succeed? And with the moon, Jupiter, you're looking out around, how can I grow? You know, with the energy of Taurus, how can I grow my finances? How can I grow my happiness? How can I grow my fulfillment? How can I grow? And grow in a sustainable fashion is kind of the ask on Wednesday, but ultimately very productive day, but it's not burning yourself out, being at the computer three Celsius's deep. <laughs> doing all of your work right away. It's, it's pausing. It's taking time to eat sustainable success. I do want to say that evening, you may have some volatile emotions. Okay. It's Pisces season. And also the Taurus moon is building to conjoin Uranus. It could be hard to get to sleep or your emotions can be up and down, something of that nature. So just more to look out for. So on Thursday, March 14th, happy Pi day. <laughs> 314, eat some pie, okay. But the Taurus moon aligns with Uranus and then squares off with Mars. So this is sort of activating the separating Mars square Uranus configuration in the sky, which by the way, tell me how was last week's astrology? Did you feel the Mars square Uranus? Did you feel the Mercury conjoining Neptune murkiness? I always love to hear how you guys experience the astrology. So let me know. But with the energy of moon conjoining Uranus and squaring Mars, you could observe that on Thursday, you wake up a little spiky, a little more angry or more reactive to things. You could have random flare-ups of anger, definitely with the Taurus moon squaring Mars, 
someone could try to tell you what to do and you could be very stubborn around, no, I'm going to do it my way. Like this is definitely the energy. If anybody tries to tell you what to do, it's almost like you want to stubbornly do the exact opposite just because they said something. Like there definitely can be an energy on Thursday where you could be fighting battles that aren't even worth it. Like trying to prove a point <laughs> around it. So doing something purposefully for the purpose of proving a point when it does not matter in the bigger picture because then the Taurus moon sextile sun and sextiles Neptune, which is the bigger picture around, I was trying to prove a point to my partner that they need to do the dishes. So I was purposely not doing it but with the energy of sextile sun and sextile Neptune. It's like, okay. And the bigger picture, does this matter? Do, do I want to die on this hill? Do I want to let it go? Do I want to have compassion for them because they're not feeling well? Like there can be an energy around getting frustrated and stubborn about something and maybe even exerting excess energy in order to prove a point, but then kind of talking yourself down around, okay, you know what? <laughs> in the bigger picture of things, it does not matter. This would be a great day to water your plants, okay? Water your plants today and really infuse the watering of your plants or whatever other errands or you have to do. See the divinity within it. With the Taurus moon, sextile sun, sextile Neptune, see the divinity in it. You can either view it around, oh, I'm just watering my plants or gosh, I'm nourishing life. <laughs> I'm so proud of my figs, right? Like my fig is doing really well. <laughs> Does anybody else have a fiddle leaf fig? They're very notoriously picky, but my fig is thriving. Figgy Smalls is doing what he needs to do, which is so special. Like you could just look at your plants and just something else I have to take care of, another thing to do, or you could just be in witness around, wow, it's growing. And so am I. I just feel like plants are such great teachers, like, you know, watering something else, sustaining life, noticing its growth. It also prompts you to observe the ways that you're watering your own growth and witnessing your own growth. So it doesn't need to literally be plants, but anything that you are doing, whether it's, you know, you could see it as just, ugh, making my family dinner, I'm so annoyed, or I'm giving my family nourishment and life and we are carving the space to connect. It's intentionally infusing some magic within the mundane is the ask of Thursday. If possible, I would sneak away from the office early, okay? The moon is void at 3.29 p.m. So sounds like an occasion for a half day. If your boss wants reason, tell him Haley Comet said so. <laughs> just kidding, maybe don't say that. But it would just be a great day for a half day or getting your tasks done and then taking some time to go for a walk in the park or do something dreamy or earthy or enjoyable. Again, make your life a work of art with Venus and Pisces. And then the moon will enter Gemini at 8.16 p.m. So the void moon 3.29 to 8.16. Some astrologers allege that when moon is in, ex in exaltation, that it is not a bad thing for the void moon. So totally up to you, but just know we have like a five hour long void moon on Thursday afternoon-ish until the moon enters Gemini, which could be ramping up more of our intellectual, mental, verbal capacities. And the Gemini moon trines Pluto. So it can be great for conversations that go deep or watching some sort of deep documentary or getting lost into like an obscure YouTube series or something of that nature. Learning, being curious, but exploring the underlying depth of it all with the Gemini moon trining Pluto. On Friday, March 15th, the moon continues on in curious chatty communicative Gemini all day long. And while this helps your communication of all sorts on Friday, you could absolutely observe focus is a little bit of a problem, <laughs> particularly towards the morning time. Gemini by its own nature, Gemini moon that is, can be a little squirrel, like it can be a little distracted. Um, and with the energy of Gemini moon square, Venus and Pisces, you could be distracted by your own daydreams. You could be distracted by online shopping. You could be planning your next vacation. You could be thinking about what to text your crush back. Like you definitely can struggle with focus or you could just wanna do what's pleasurable. You're like, I don't wanna be at work. So let me go grab a latte. Like there could just be an energy around, oh, I, I don't wanna. And again, your focus could be a little all over the place. With the Gemini moon then going on to sextile Mercury in Aries, this would be supportive around meetings, particularly meetings where you need to get to the point. <laughs> Like I said, with Gemini moon answering to Mercury and Aries, we could be a little bit more easily distracted if things are needlessly vague or not getting to the point. Like with Gemini moon, we wanna connect, we wanna brainstorm, let's ask each other questions, let's be curious, but with a sextile to Mercury and Aries, you know, time is money, baby. Like we cannot just be chit-chatting here at the meeting all day long. So with the energy of Gemini moon, sextile Mercury and Aries, it can be helpful for writing, so long as you keep focus on, on track, as well as any sort of conversing that you need to do. And it might be helpful to just be curious about other people's 
experiences. Like this is sort of the energy of the vibe check around sitting down with Steph and being like, how the hell are you? Like I lost many chapters, like fill me in on the lore. Like with the energy of Gemini Moon, maybe part of the reason why you went over and had this conversation with Steph is because you're so curious. Like what does your life look like? Like I used to be with you every single day and now I know nothing that has happened within your world within the last couple of years. Like my own personal feelings aside, I'm just curious what's life been like. And you know, with Gemini Moon, Sextile Mercury and Aries, it's almost getting into that childlike, like playful, curious spirit. And it helps to be curious about other people's experiences. Because again, if we get closer to people, we get closer to God, we get closer to divinity. We are all reflections or pieces of the divine. And so being curious about other people's experiences, even if they're different than your own, can help you get closer to the divine, right? With the Gemini placements all squaring off with Pisces placements. I do see there's like a somber energy coming in in the evening time around 5.06 p.m. when the Gemini moon squares Saturn and Pisces. You could be feeling really blah. Maybe you're overthinking something that happened at work. We all know Gemini moon and those thoughts, okay, within that brain, you could be overthinking. Maybe you were a little too honest. Let's be real about about Mercury and Aries. Everybody's being very honest right now, which I do think there could be something such as radical honesty and just allowing our truth to be heard. But with the energy of Gemini moon squaring Saturn, maybe you're in regret <laughs> around something that you said or something that you didn't say, or you keep replaying a certain scenario. There just could be like a kind of emotionally blah transition towards the weekend. And on that note, I do wanna say we're building to the Neptune Kazemi on Sunday, but Neptune, aspects, just as Neptune, a planet, it has a tendency to bleed. Some astrologers quite literally use a larger orb for Neptune because the very nature of Neptune is to dissolve and kind of make murky. So it's not so cut and dry around, we'll just be feeling Neptune energy on Sunday. You could be starting to feel this whirlpool energy pulling you in. And with Neptune energy, you could be taking on other people's emotions at work. Like with the moon square Saturn, you could be like, why am I not feeling good? Why am I feeling so blah? and not realizing, oh, it's taking on my client's energy, right? This is not mine, this does not belong to me. That's the challenge with Neptune energy is it can be hard to separate where you stop and where I begin. It could just all be mixed in together <laughs> in this Neptunian puddle, essentially. And you could also be feeling a strong nudge to want to escape. Now, some people feel Neptune energy as anxiety, which again, the Gemini moon energy can also ramp that up. Some people feel Neptune energy as being very sleepy, being very checked out, almost wanting to like dissociate from life a little bit. Or also Neptune energy can make us feel like nothing's real. Like Pisces season in general can make us feel like nothing's real. And then Neptune energy is kind of like activating it where we could just be like, what is real? I want to lie in bed and rot all weekend. There could be kind of nudges of that. There's lots of beautiful applications of Neptune energy, we'll talk about it, but just observing how these tendrils of Neptune are coming into your experience. On Saturday, March 16th, the Gemini moon sextiles Chiron early in the day around 4 a.m., which indicates that there can be healing conversations taking place or even healing thoughts. You could be journaling. This would sort of be the energy around being able to talk to Steph and just feeling the healing that can come from being able to converse and remembering the inside jokes. This would be the energy around calling up your best friend and venting about the week, cracking jokes with your partner, having a little banter with the barista. These little moments can also be portals to divinity, right? Like I know we talk a lot down on small talk and listen I love talking about the deep stuff as well but small talk can be so powerful in that it's it's beyond just talking about the weather it's just looking at someone and acknowledging hey you're a person I'm a person as well we're having this experience and we're having this dialogue <laughs> and that could be healing especially if you're moving through something isolating it could be so nice just those small interactions that you have day to day can just give, keep you very tethered keep you very anchored as well as keep you very out of your own mind because Gemini moon can be quite the overthinker <laughs> energy. And speaking of out of your own mind, that evening time, the Gemini moon will trine Mars and Aquarius. So would be great for socializing or moving your body. Again, things that get you out of like your own internal spirals and like connect you to other people can be something that's feeling empowering. And then that evening, the Gemini moon squares the sun. So that's the first quarter moon and then squares Neptune. And here there is this tension around what makes sense, Gemini moon, what feels right with the energy of the Pisces placements. And that can be such a challenge in rectifying the two because sometimes other people and their words and their take on a certain scenario can feel more real 
than what you feel and know to be true within your own experience. Because your intuition is not visible, sometimes it can feel faker than what's coming out of people's mouths. So for example, if you're chatting with Steph and she's telling you, yeah, it was really hurtful that you went behind my back and started talking to a guy that I liked and then lied to me about it. And you're like, hold on, that's not what I remember. There can be an energy where you're like, well, Steph is saying it, so it must be true. There could be an energy around believing what people are telling you, even if your intuition is like, mm -mm, nope, that is not what went down. That is not what went down. And this would even be the energy just with the Gemini Moon Sextile Chiron I'd highlighted journaling. It could be helpful to look back on your journals if you are reconnecting or re reconciling with someone to see what really happened because oftentimes it could be so healing and so lovely to be able to reconnect, but you need to remember the lore because like I said, we have a building Neptune Kazemi and so with the energy of Neptune, we're not seeing things clearly. We're, we're brushing things under the rug. Oh, is that what happened? Sure, okay, we'll go with that. It really felt like it was something different, but I don't know, I must be crazy, I must be crazy. Sometimes it can be helpful to consult the journals and be like, no, 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 that's not how it went down at all. I'm not gonna let you spin this. This is actually what happened. And not making her words more real than what you and your gut knows to be true. And it can be so hard to advocate for what your gut is telling you. Especially if other people are like, no, this is what happened, this is the story, what have you. It could be so hard to stand within truth in something that does not feel real, like your intuition. Like if all of your friends are going to the party and you just have this gut instinct around, mm, I don't need to be there. It could be so hard when other people are like, no, you've got to come with us or it's going to make it so much harder for us. We're going to have to drop you off. It's like, mm, nope, I. this is my guidance system. This is my GPS, okay? Y'all are not my navigation systems. I am my navigation system. And this is how I connect to source energy and this is how I am protected is following my intuition because I don't know if you all agree but I have never regretted following my intuition when I get a strong ping even if it makes things inconvenient even if I've missed out on certain parties or what have you I have never regretted trusting my intuition and I just see this energy with the Pisces sun square Gemini moon. It's like, but this makes sense, but this is what they're telling me. But the Pisces sun is like, but what is your intuition? What is source telling you? And how can you use that to cut through the illusion? Because like I said, we have Neptune Kazemi the next day. So it's like, this is smoke screen energy. We're not seeing things clearly. And so you could be having this battle around what makes sense and like what my gut is saying. Outside of that, with the first quarter moon, this does call back last week's new moon in Pisces. And this is the first challenge moon phase. I love just talking through all of the archetypes of all the different lunar phases, but essentially we envision what we want during the new moon. That was last week's new moon in Pisces. We take action towards it during the waxing crescent and we meet the first challenge or obstacle during the first quarter moon. And it kind of is a time energetically when it asks us, how badly do we want this? Whatever it is that you're building, it kind of presents a certain obstacle or challenge around are you going to give up or are you going to dig your heels in deeper call upon courage and keep going and particularly on saturday night but honestly the entire weekend really honor what visions are coming to you in your dreams really ask for signs ask for symbols it's pisces season and believe the data that comes to you in your dreams listen i know a lot of people think they're random my dreams have never not once steered me wrong Okay, sometimes if I'm asking for guidance, I'll say, spirit, show me a dream that gets to what I need to know about this situation. It'll arrive, okay? And I have wild freaking dreams, but when I really tune into the theme, I'm like, okay, I see. And it is a way of protection. On Sunday, March 17th, we have Sun conjunct Neptune, also known as Neptune Kazemi, also known as Neptune in the heart of the sun. Whatever you want to call it, one thing's for sure, it is infusing your Sunday, but also your weekend, as Neptune aspects have a tendency to bleed out with this tinge of fantasy, imagination, escapism. And when it comes to Neptune energy, it is aligned with the sun. Sun is ego, identity, life force energy. And so when we consider sun Neptune, like I said, we're finding it hard to find the boundaries around where I stop and you begin. We could be merging completely. We could be taking on people's emotions. We could be really deeply feeling the suffering for others. We could be going to a party and feel exhausted for days on end because we listened to what everybody was going through there. We could be talking with Steph and feeling into her version of events so deeply that you're taking on as yours. You can find it hard to find where you stop and other people begin. 
And with Sun Neptune, this is gonna go one of two ways, and you can observe this individually or collectively. Either with Sun Neptune, you could be battling with energy around, I am nothing, I'm a fleck of dust on this planet. Give this very dissociative, what is real, I don't know what's real, so I'm just gonna stay in bed type energy. Or it could also give the type energy around, I am God. <laughs> This can absolutely be God complex energy. Like I said, you could observe other people kind of in distorted energy around overinflated sense of self, seeing themselves as, you know, God and that nothing can hurt them. And I think the ask is to find the in-between. Yes, recognize the divinity that exists within you. You are an expression of the divine with a purpose, with talents, with gifts that are entirely your own. Recognize the divinity that exists within you. But also know that unlike a god, you are not exempt to lessons and hardships and crash lands down to reality. So it's not feeling like you're a fleck of the dust, nor a god. <laughs> it's finding the in-between. It's finding the divinity that exists within the mortality of being a human being is really the ask with Sun Neptune. But you could be really observing with Sun Neptune that people are having an inflated perception of themselves. And maybe even with Sun Neptune trying to loop you into worlds that are not true. <laughs> that are not real, like stuff trying to loop you in. Yeah, you did that. Again, you don't have to merge realities and take that on as your truth. Consult the receipts, <laughs> consult the journals. And Sun Neptune can be very, very inspired. It is not a coincidence that most Pisces are musicians and artists because I think when you deeply feel into so much of the beauty and the suffering that is being a human being on this planet, you can't help but want to create or at least do something with it or catalog or capture these moments and these emotions that you experience within this life. So with Sun Neptune, you could deeply feel inspired. Again, that inspiration could be coming from witnessing the beauty or perhaps even witnessing the suffering or maybe even in the in-between. But definitely with Sun Neptune, you're wanting to escape into your own world. Hence why within the vibe check, you know, you are not sober. <laughs> you are not sober. And so you could feel a strong call around just wanting to get lost, wanting to run away, not deal with the reality, get lost in this dream world which again, maybe is why you went to the party, right? You wanted a break from reality. You wanted a break from your mind, hence the red wine and the J, okay? That's the energy of Neptune. And sometimes escaping into the fantasy is helpful. Again, in constructive ways, we always need to be mindful with Neptune energy. Sometimes it can provide us inspiration and nuance. And again, within the vibe check, it's not that anything truly heinous happened or regrettable happened with you being in that altered state of mind and you just kind of forgave a friend. But with Neptune energy, we always need to be conscious of that. Like just because you reconnected with Steph doesn't mean you need to give her, you know, your social security card and add her as a beneficiary to your life insurance policy. <laughs> Like that's the energy of Neptune. You can escape into this dream world every so often. Escape in this dream world with Steph around this world of we're gonna be best friends again, we're going to brunch, all's good. But again, acknowledge that that was your Neptunian brain. That was your brain on red wine and Jay. <laughs> and sometimes you have to rationally like really take in the, the facts and the figures around, do I wanna allow this person access to my world? Because Neptune energy is very heart opening. I see a lot of my clients when they're having Neptune transits, it can be a time of forgiveness. It can be a time of giving towards other people because Neptune is spirit. And when we see the divinity, it's like, why would I not forgive you? Why would I not absorb you back into my life? Why would I not? You're a soul, you're so special to me. And forgiveness can be powerful, but you can forgive someone from your past without taking them into your future. You don't need to give everybody access to you, but you also don't need to hold this hate in your heart. You can just find a neutral perspective around, hey, you are a soul and you're beautiful and you're divine and I appreciate the love that our connection had and how our relationships jumpstarted certain parts of my experience. I can appreciate that without needing to have brunch with you every single week and jumping into our old friendship as it was because it'll never be as it was. And maybe that's the fantasy of it all with the Neptune energy around, this is how it's going to happen. It's gonna go right back to normal. That feels important to mention because on Sunday, the moon does enter Cancer at 2.40 a.m., which is a more nostalgic energy. It has to do with the past. So there could be an energy around just wanting to gloss over the issues and restart things as they were in the past. But 
When we acknowledge spiritual growth, it's like we cannot go backwards. We can only go forwards. And we need to focus on the individuals within our world that we can move forward with. But we don't need to have hate in our heart or you know, square up with Steph if we see her at a party. We could just be neutral and we could just have love for that person without needing them to be part of our story. You know, I recently reconnected with someone from my past, um, the tower. If you know, you know. If you watch Magic Monday, you'll remember me talking through the whole tower relationship within my life. But I ended up reconnecting with that person. They followed me on Instagram while I was filming Magic Monday. I was shook. I thought I would never hear from this person again. And they ended up wishing me happy birthday. And I've not talked to this person for years and years and years. I never thought I would. Again, I knew nothing about their life. I knew nothing of what was going on. Then all of a sudden they just slid in like, happy birthday. As though it was just so normal to be wishing me a happy birthday. And to be completely honest with you, I kind of thought if I were to ever run into this person in person, I thought I would have to go like hide in the bathroom. Like I thought this person hated me. So to just be hit with like a happy birthday, hope you're well. I was like, whoa, okay, we're cool. I guess time does heal all. And it was like interesting because just engaging with this person and like kind of catching up, like, so how have you been? It's been freaking years. We were just like chatting on this very friendly energy and I was like, okay, I'll meet you in this world. <laughs> Felt very Neptunian around, okay, are we just gonna pretend that the last time we interacted, we were not screaming at each other? We're just gonna ask what we do for work and stuff, okay. <laughs> I'll meet you in that world. It's not totally reality, but sure, maybe time does heal all. And it was really healing. It honestly was really nice to just be able to reconnect with this person in a very friendly way, like being able to catch up and just also being able to express like, oh my gosh, I'm so proud of you. Like you've done so well, you've overcome this. Like it is special when we shared certain formative years of our life with somebody else. I'm like, there's not a lot of people who knew me at that time in my life. Like how special to have this lore and this history and this growth with this individual. That being said, that person is not coming with me into my future. My love, I've learned. <laughs> I've learned from my tower experience. Not that that was even on the table. It was absolutely on a very like friendly type beat, but you can reminisce, you can forgive. Again, it was just so nice to be like, wow, if I run into this person IRL, I don't need to hide in the bathroom. Like we're cool. Cause that's the energy of Neptune. It's like, we don't see things clearly. Like when we reconnect, we only remember the good things about that particular relationship or friendship within the vibe check. We're not seeing the nitty gritty. I literally had to revisit my journals because I was like, why were we always fighting? Like just even talking about it in that Magic Monday, that was when I revisited the journals because I was like, what was our issue? Why were we always fighting? Really held on to all of these emotions just in our ending of things that I was a horrible person, that I had done something really bad. Like when I thought about that relationship, I was like, God, I was the worst. And granted, not a great side of me within that relationship. Lots of what I did was not nice and messed up and I would not do that any longer and I was immature and I was young. I can own up to that. And I held on to that guilt and I did something so horrible and I betrayed this person who I love so much and I had to revisit my journals because I was like, what did I do? I just held on to the emotion and revisiting the journals. I learned that what caused the final blow up was that I had dared to go on a date with somebody else during a time that we were off. So like I said, in that prior Magic Monday, we were on, off, on, off. And I went on a date with somebody else and someone, I don't know how he found out, but he found out. I was whatever he said. And I absorbed that. Like I'd been living with that guilt around feeling like I was this evil, person that I had betrayed him so deeply. And now looking back, listen, I know everybody's gonna have their opinions on it, but now I'm like, girl, I was single. I went on a date. Like, I think I was allowed to do that. But that's why with the energy of Neptune, sometimes we can take on other people's narrative and take it on as though this person's saying it, so it must be true. So it's helpful for me to revisit the journals and be like, girl, it's not how it went down. Editing Healy here. I just wanna make abundantly clear that this individual had every right to feel the way that he felt, to have enforced the boundary that he had enforced, and to have found that behavior unacceptable. I completely understand that. And by no means am I trying to like belittle that or mock that or talk that down. He was absolutely entitled to feel how it is that he felt and to take the actions necessary. And honestly, I talked about it in the other video. I really think it was divine intervention. Like something, something had to give at a certain point. So I'm by no means judging or condemning how he behaved, nor am I saying that I felt vindicated, like, haha, I was right. Like, that's not that big of a deal because who am I to talk to somebody else's pain and what they would require or expect from somebody that they were not in a relationship with, but used to be. So I totally get that. And I just wanted to make that clear. It was more so healing in that I had blown it up to be something much, much worse because I'm somebody 
call it the Pisces in me. I don't always remember events. I don't always remember words that are said. All I remember when I go through my memories is just how it felt. And it feels so overpowering sometimes that it's hard for me to cut through the Neptunian fog to really see what was happening here. Like outside of the emotional tinge that I applied the situation, what actually happened. And so I think in the Neptunian phase of it, I had internalized that I'd done something really, really horrible. And I'd still held on to this guilt around feeling that I was like this evil person. So to have clarity around what event made me feel that way in review of my own morals and ethics at this standpoint of life, it's not something that I find, you know, unforgivable. So I just want to share that because I'm not sharing this from a judgmental standpoint or anything at all. Like I said, we're cool, no beef, all good. <laughs> So again, being able to connect on like this friend vibe and being able to revisit my journals and be like, oh honey, like you're not an evil person was so healing for me. So sometimes it's nice to reminisce on the past. Sometimes it's nice to reconnect, have a little chit chat, but that doesn't mean you need to drag those people into your future. <laughs> That's the message for Sunday. But on a very literal note, be mindful with the escapism, okay? Be mindful with the red wine, okay? Or whatever it is that you used to escape. This could be a great movie day. This could be a great day to get lost in some music, get lost in nature, get lost in something, get lost in church, get lost in spirit. Your intuition can definitely be speaking to you, especially with Moon, also in intuitive cancer as well. And just know if you do feel called to, you know, reminisce on the past, look at old journals. We are closing out the zodiacal year as I highlighted which sometimes can be an, an energy where we're wanting to release, let go of things, whether it's like feeling emotions to shed them, getting rid of belongings. We could be just sentimental looking at old journals, okay? Sometimes it can be helpful for receipts, okay? Just saying, if you have a tendency to fog or block out certain things as well, but you could be looking at past journals, looking at old photographs or belongings. Honor how those experiences made you the person that you are, the role that they played within your spiritual evolution, but knowing that just because they played a role in your spiritual evolution doesn't mean that they need to continue to do so. So my loves, that is our week. The Magic Monday mantra of the week is, I am a witness to the beauty and divinity around me and within me. This week's astrology asks you to see the magic within your surroundings. As we've been talking about, you can either live your life as though everything is magical or nothing is magical. And with Venus and Pisces and the Neptune Kazemi, it's a reminder that so much of life is in that something more. And that something more, it doesn't always come through around, you know, the clouds parting and God literally talking to us. Sometimes God talks to us just with the sparkle on the palm trees. Sometimes God talks to us within a child on the trail wanting to show the light up shoes. Sometimes God talks to us through song or through art or through movies. And it's really just being a witness to the divinity that exists around you as well as within you. And so when it comes to this week's astrology, to witness the divinity, it's not just focusing on the beauty of everything and, you know, glossing over the problem. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> Neptune energy, Pisces energy can make us want to do that. But it's also seeing the divinity within, you know, your sadness or the divinity within in your pain, the energy of, you know, crying at a good movie. Like it's sad, yes, but you're also in witness of this human experience, which is beautiful even in its ups and downs, its ebbs and flows, its wax and wanes. A Pisces season asks you to be a witness to all it is that you are feeling and perceiving and witnessing both within you as well as around you. Pisces season can feel like a kaleidoscope in that way. All of these shifting colors and sounds and sights can be confusing, but also dazzling, dizzying, inspiring. So choose to view things through the lens of love, through the lens of the divine, through the lens of beauty. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And this week we can really behold a lot of beauty if we are looking for it. So my loves, if you made it to the end of the video, go ahead and drop the piano emoji below within the comments or use the word piano within a sentence to let me know that you made it to the end. A reminder that you can use code Pisces season that is only active this week or at least until Aries season begins where you can get 33% off any tier within Self Care Astrology. Join us for the group classes such a beautiful way to learn how to really activate the magic that exists within your celestial blueprint. I would so love to help you within that container. It's already such a magical gathering of souls. I'm so happy to be teaching again. It's one of my favorite things that I do and it's been too long since I've been in class. So I'm super excited for what we have planned this year. But until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay cosmic.